We are about to go on a guided tour of the world of Feedwater, a puzzle game that requires your wits and reflexes to carefully set off death traps and chain reactions. We'll be walking through the first level of the game's prototype, Arrows, and as the developer, I'll talk you through its design. Let's begin. Our goal is to reach the exit of this level, wherever that might be. But standing in our way is an arrow box, the first object the game introduces you to. Arrow boxes are made of wood, and the rule is that you can break a wooden box just by touching it. There are no action buttons in feed water. The control scheme is kept deliberately simple. You just move and look, nothing else. So what happens when we break this arrow box? Two arrows are released from inside, and they will fly forever in that direction until they hit something. In this case, they hit a steel crate and unblock our path. Steel crates are a common obstacle in feed water, and will usually need to be destroyed. As they're made of metal, you cannot break them yourself, only with projectiles or explosives. Notice how the arrow box itself blocked the way out, forcing you to interact with it. As this level acts as a tutorial, it needs to teach the player the game mechanics by forcing them to interact with objects. One of my goals as the designer was to teach these mechanics without any text or explanation. The next room does exactly the same, but requires a deliberate interaction from the player rather than an accidental one. For the first time, we also have the risk of death, as the arrow can kill you if you walk into it. Feedwater does have violent deaths, though I plan to add a setting to turn these off. However, the game is pacifist by principle. There are no weapons, no melee attacks, or any direct way of harming another being. Room number three gently raises the complexity by demonstrating that arrows can be chained one onto another. Possibilities should start emerging in your head now. This one also forces you to get out of the way, teaching you that arrows are to be avoided. Next, we meet the circular saw. In hindsight, this level introduces too many objects, and these little devils probably deserve their own tutorial. Here, we learn that arrows can pass over them rather than destroying them. And if you dare to touch it, well, you'll learn about that too. Four rooms and still no checkpoint, but don't worry. One is right around the corner. We just need to get rid of the steel crate. This might be the first time we need to use our brain though. This arrow comes straight at us, but where do we go? Off to the side. Now this is the most complex chain reaction we've seen so far, but I'll be honest with you, this is tiny compared to the vast machines we'll encounter later in the game. We've got two crates in our way this time. If we were naive, we would trigger the whole arrow chain at once, but that just eliminates one crate. This is the moment where Feedwater teaches you that these chain reactions are not just mindless paths of destruction. They need to be set off in the right order at the right time. In this case, it's better to set off the chain halfway before hitting the first arrow. Just around the corner is the last object this level introduces, the dynamite box. Like the steel crate, you cannot break this open yourself. Let's see what it does. Dynamite is a critical aspect of chain reactions in feed water. It destroys everything in the eight surrounding tiles, including you if you're not careful. As we transition to this next room, you may notice a shift in the camera. Some of my playtesters commented that having the camera move with the player sometimes makes it difficult to see the puzzle you're working on. So for some rooms, I transition the camera from the player to a fixed point of interest that allows you to see all of the puzzle objects without them moving around. Let's see that transition again. This one's not as smooth as I'd liked, but that's okay. This is a prototype and we can clean this up later. What's in this big room though? This one is more a demonstration than a puzzle. Again, just to get your imagination wondering, what could we build in this game? Notice that little screen shake there, just to bring those explosions to life a little. The level is almost over now, just a grand finale left. I try to end each level with something special, something that brings it all together. I might have gone a little too far with this one. Too much going on, too much noise, but that's okay, it can be touched up later. Art is an iterative process. The only thing you can do here is release this arrow, but then what? A barrage of arrows is coming at you and you can't get past this circular saw to hide. Staying still isn't the best option. What if we simply run away instead? And 
And just like that, the level is over. The next one, Boulders, expands the game's puzzle vocabulary substantially, but let's save our visit there until next time. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you on the next one.